you may recall in the start point section, you know, we're outputting the XY position and the S word for our spindle direction, and we're outputting the uh, position in Z to set our clearances, or set our, our Z offsets, I should say, and we're outputting our variable of tool change to equal zero, to begin to reset that variable tool change to zero. Now, uh, the uh, example of code we're trying to duplicate is a little different. We're outputting a G90, a G54, a G00, the X, the Y, the spindle speed, the M3. So we're outputting the spindle and the spindle direction on the same line with our position move. And the position move has a couple of other items that aren't in our existing example, actually one item. And the format's a little different there. Next thing you'll notice is we have a, on the G43 line, it's going to Z two inches, then the H offset, and then the M08 or coolant code. So that's a little different, and we have an extra Z after that. And then the next item is the T number. And what the T number is doing is actually calling the next tool. It's pre-staging the next tool. How do we make these changes? Well, first thing we want to do is we look at our start point. We're going to start off by getting this G90 in there. Now, we talked before when we were talking about the post earlier, we talked about how you want to try to avoid actually outputting G90 and G91 as hard-coded values. In other words, as putting, for example, if I type G90 asterisk, you, you tend to want to avoid doing that because uh, that actually tries to shift the Esprit system from absolute to incremental. I always prefer that if I want to simply output the G90 on that line, is to go ahead and put it inside of quotations so that it outputs it as a literal G91, or excuse me, G90, I'm already about ready to make a mistake there. Anyway, G90, so that we don't uh, uh, try to um, outthink a spree by putting in a G90 as a hard-coded value. So it simply outputs this as a literal phrase, G90. Now the next thing you have is the work system code. That's your G54. That looks fine, uh, except we, we have a G00 that's before that. I'll simply uh, cut that from here. I'll cut that here, and I'll paste it here. So now it's going to look G90, G54, G00. Now you notice also the S and the M3 are on the same line with this information. Well, one way that we can deal with this is I can put in a uh, two slashes so that the line number, the line will actually carry over or wrap around to this line, and then simply take away the colon and the N. So now this is all one line now. To our start point, we're now going to go ahead and pause the tutorial and give you the opportunity to make those same changes. Now let's make the changes that we need in our post for example start point. Our existing code consists of these three lines and our post looks like this. As you can see we have our first line of code kicking out the XY number, the S and spindle direction and our G43 line for our height offset. Now the changes we're going to make will allow our code to look like this and it's going to first combine the first two lines together by putting the double slashes in and of course you also want to remove the colon and the end block from, from the second line and then after that we're going to of course have the G43 but remember we're going to add a new, a new keyword with Z uh, with two underscores. And you may recall also we're going to place that in the miscellaneous format 2 up above in our formatable dimensions. And while we're on the subject, we're also going to have a formatable uh, miscellaneous format number 3, which is our T underscore that we're going to use on our tool definition to pre-stage our next tool. Now again, notice that uh, we have the Z we're outputting on the line after the G43. This is the actual Z of the graphics file. And the next line consists of our test, where we're going to say that if the next tool equals zero, we're going to output the new miscellaneous format T underscore with first tool. And if it's anything other than zero, we're going to go ahead and output the next tool number. And we're going to put the end if to close it. So, just like before, 
follow these steps to go ahead and, and pause the tutorial, make the changes, test it, make sure you get it correct, and when you're done, resume the tutorial and we'll move on to the next changes. We're now going to look at uh, putting some logic in our post for any missing work offsets. And of course, there's some good reasons to do this. It's a good safety measure if you forget to put your work offsets in your uh, features tab of your project manager. It also adds some more valuable logic to the post and of course it'll, it'll help reduce NC code errors. If we get in a hurry writing a program and forget to put a, a work offset value in, uh, we at least won't get any errors at the machine. Let's now start our discussion about work offsets by let's let's take a look at how a spree is using work offsets in this file. We go to our features tab of our project manager and if we open up our XYZ work coordinate we see that we have a 54 in the standard work coordinate number. Now if we look at our post I actually just generate some NC code we'll see we're getting a G54 at the, in, out of our start point section. Now in our post, we look at start point, we'll see we're using the phrase work system code, which is looking at a keyword called work system 1 through 6 to output our G54 through 59. The same of course could be used for uh, work, work system codes for uh, machines that use E's or H's or other letters. Now another thing that you can do with work system, just so you know, is instead of using work system code, there is an actual a formatable dimension called work system. And this is where we could utilize multiple work coordinates well beyond the six standard uh, G54 through 59. So if you have extended work offsets, this is how we can support that. Now of course in this example what we're talking about is one of the problems we have with new users is that they will forget to plug in this value for the standard work coordinate number. They'll leave this value set to zero. Now of course if I plug that in at zero, let me close my post, and let's regenerate my code. Of course we get nothing in our post, posted code. We don't get a G54, we get nothing. That's because the value for that field is zero, so there's nothing to put in. So what we want to do is add some logic to put in some sort of a default value so that if the value were to be zero for the work coordinate field we would at least get something in our code. Now the first thing I want to look at when I make a change like this is I know I'm going to have to have some logic. So what I want to double check is how many times am I using the word work system code. The reason I'm doing this is that if I have to put a, a fair bit of logic inside the post if this work system code is used more than once, I might want to consider using a define section. So I'll go down and take a look through the code, through the post, and here I see another work system code inside of my park. And it looks like that's the only one, only two actually. So that's enough for me to consider go ahead and just uh, create a new define section to do this calculation for, or do the logic for our work offsets. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new define section and we'll call it uh, work offset. Now what we want to do is we want to look up the value that's being put in work system code which of course is if we look at our, our work coordinate we want to know that field right there in work coordinates we want to see what CL file value is being used for that field. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my operations and let's go ahead and uh, let's say I'll generate some NC code for the facing operation and we'll do a CL file. Now of course the first section is there our, our machine setup stuff and then the technology itself and as we look down through the, the uh, technology thing looks fine there we see a work coordinate number and I see a work coordinate name now the work coordinate number, which is 140, is now a zero. Now I'm not really sure if this is the right field or not. So let's go back into the work coordinate and let's put in some other value, say 57 for example. This is a nice way of being able to go test that value. So I'll go back and I'll go back in to generate my CL file. 
and we go down to that section where it says work coordinate, and you see now work coordinate number 140 now equals 57. So that clearly tells me that 140 is the correct CL record for that work offset value. So that's what we want to test for, 140. So let's go back into our post, and in that define section we're going to add, and I closed the file, so let me re-enter the word define, and we're going to call it work offset. And I'm going to simply say if next CL file 140 equals 0, we want to force out, let's say, G54 in this case with an asterisk. We're going to force a G54 if the value is 0. But what if the value is not 0? So let's use else. We're going to output work system code with an asterisk. And then we can place an end if after that. That line's getting a little bit long, so we'll double we'll put a double slash and enter to extend that line to the next line. And that looks pretty good. Now, once we have this define section def created, we now need to replace the use use of work system code to call this define section. So what I'm going to do is change this phrase to a dollar sign work offset. And I'll do the same, I'm fact, I'll just copy this and paste it down below in my park section. Good. Now we'll save the, the, the changes and run our post compiler, no errors. So now we, well, let's double check our settings. We have this currently set to 57. So it should be no surprise that when we generate our NC code, standard NC code, we should get a 57. Now let's go back and let's change our work coordinate value to a value of 0. So let's say we forgot to put the work offset in. So we go create our NC code and you see now we've got a 54 in there. So that tells us that our test is working. If the value is 0, the worst that's going to happen is we're going to get a G54 in our code. We certainly won't get a blank value like we were getting a moment ago. So, this is just another good example of utilizing a, a define section and finding out where in the CL file which field we want to test for to help control our NC code. So that concludes this customization. Now, to add the logic to our post for our error checking for work coordinates. We started by defining a new work offsets uh, section, and we put logic to test for next CL file 140, which was our work offset value. So if that value equals 0, we're going to force G54 with an asterisk. Of course, you can replace this with E1, G15, H2, or whatever work coordinate system your particular machine and post require. Of course, otherwise, if, the val if there is an actual value in our work offset, then we're going to output the actual work offset itself. Now, inside of StartPoint, we pointed the logic in, inside of StartPoint, we pointed the section that was calling work system code, we're actually calling work offsets. And of course, you'll notice that in this define section, we're using a define section that is included all in one line. So we do not, we are not required to put the in define statement here. Now, also, we've made the same change in our example park section, so that where work system code was being called, we output work offsets. So, go ahead and uh, pause the tutorial, make the changes, and you're ready to move on to the next exercise.